Organizers of that Stranger Than Fiction review of votes cast in last year's election in Phoenix, Arizona, are hitting the pause button on one of the most outlandish escapades in the wake of the former president's lies about who actually won. There's a private company called Cyber Ninjas is far from the finish line in counting, or saying they're counting, more than two million votes cast in Maricopa County. The workers it has hired have to stop tomorrow because of a number of high school graduations which were scheduled for the building where the count is being held. Now, the review was orchestrated by Republicans in the Arizona State Senate amid wild conspiracy theories involving ultraviolet light and even bamboo. Xinan Kim La has been covering the saga since the beginning and was finally allowed inside. We are getting the first look ourselves. Hey, good morning. At the next act in the replay of the big lie. In the press box. That the 2020 election was stolen. So this is the press box. And that's the floor. The counting floor of yet another tally of the nearly 2.1 million ballots in Maricopa County from a distance. And they're keeping reporters so far away that I have to use binoculars to see. It looks like a ballot review, but look harder. And the ballots are on a lazy Susan, zooming by ballot counters. This guy in a cowboy hat, walking around with what appears to be some type of cell phone jammer. And then there's this light machine with multiple cameras. Two of the three matching. Ken Bennett, hired by the Republican-controlled Arizona Senate to help run this ballot review, explains why they're using it. Some microscopic cameras can zoom in on certain parts of the ballot to make sure that where the ovals were filled in, there's a depression instead of the ovals being filled in by a Xerox machine. Is there concern uh, that mm. ballots were Xeroxed? Uh, there, there's always concern that uh, we want to make sure that every ballot came from a, an eligible registered voter in Maricopa County, as opposed to somebody trying to introduce unauthorized ballots. That's a conspiracy theory, that ballots were somehow snuck in, leading to Donald Trump's defeat in the state last year. These types of lies resonated with ballot counters like Eloise Flagg. I hope that we can, can come to a point where we're happy with the results and truth is told. We talked to her as workers arrived outside the Coliseum to count ballots. Their cars covered with bumper stickers supporting Trump and logos for conspiracy websites. Do you think that Donald Trump won Arizona? Yes, I do. I think that Donald Trump won the election. Firm believer. No, thank you. These workers didn't want to talk unless... But I would like to hear you guys hey, talk hey, about hey. Hunter Biden's laptop. Oh, yeah. They kind of made a sign of non-disclosure. Workers were told to not tell the public anything. Remember the guy in the cowboy hat? He jumped in to tell this worker to ignore us. He works for Cyber Ninjas, the tech company hired by Arizona Senate Republicans to conduct this third ballot review, or as Lisa Shackett calls it. It was complete theater. With no training, Shackett got hired for two days. Here she is on the floor as an observer. She's retired, a Democrat, and worried about lack of training or consistent protocol with ballots. The effort here is to uncover a, a fraud and if they can't uncover it, then they're going to create the fraud. From the counting process, it is not a normal um, recount process. Um, it is definitely not an audit process. Ryan Macias is an expert in election technology. He's on the floor, brought in by the Arizona Secretary of State to observe Cyber Ninja's ballot count. He's a registered independent and has been hired by both Republicans and Democrats to help safeguard dozens upon dozens of state and federal elections. I mean, th there's ballots, um, there's uh, people counting, but the process in which they are utilizing, at least on the counting floor, is nothing that is in an election uh, environment. A show that the Maricopa County Sheriff does not want to be a part of. To be reckless and to give away something of uh, this capacity into the hands of a complete stranger is not going to happen while I am the sheriff. Why is the sheriff involved? Another conspiracy this audit is chasing. The cyber ninjas want county routers to see if hackers rigged the election. Sheriff Penzone refuses to hand over the router, saying the entire county's electronic security and law enforcement technology is at stake. And when you have individuals who assume a conspiracy and then try to create the reality behind it, it's extremely dangerous. Is that what's happening here? Do you that is what's happening here. You know, there's assumptions without any factual information to justify that. 
and this bizarre ride is far from over. In just a couple of hours, the ballot counting is going to pause because there are high school graduations next week. So they got to give up the space in the Coliseum. And so those 2.1 million ballots, they're going to travel outside that Coliseum past what I'm standing in front of, which is the Crazy Times Carnival. It runs through Saturday. The move is going to happen tomorrow morning. And they're going to head to that green building. The Cyber Ninjas, Arizona Republicans, the Senate Republicans say that that building is temperature controlled 24 hours monitored with security but here's a couple of issues Anderson the wall closest to the carnival has as it's being used by carnival goers it's public toilets and the state fairgrounds does not recommend use of that building right now because of summer heat wow. and we're talking about paper ballots Anderson how long is the crazy time carnival open by the way do you know uh, another 48 hours, so oh, I, I believe wow. tickets are on sale if you'd like. Uh, well, I'll, I'll try to rush down. Uh, crazy times. Kyung La, I appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks very much. As her uh, story pointed out, what's happening in Arizona is a direct result of the former president's big lie that the election was somehow stolen, and that lie has rippled across the country, especially in states led by Republicans, which have enacted a series of new laws aimed at the restricting of voting in upcoming elections. Joining me now is former Georgia State Representative Stacey Abrams, founder of a group called Fair Fight and the author of a brand new novel, While Justice Sleeps. Representative Abrams, I, I want to ask you about your new book in a moment, but, but just first on the news, given all your work on voting rights, when you see this so-called audit in Arizona with cell phone jammers and UV lights and conspiracy theories about bamboo ballots brought in from Asia, what is happening there? It's a continuation of the big lie, but more importantly and more concerningly, it's a continuation of the insurrection, of this attempt to disen disenfranchise voters and to dismiss the legitimacy of our elections. And we know that this is only part of a larger intention. Uh, just today, there was leaked audio from Heritage Action for America, where they admitted that this is model legislation being promulgated across the country through a vast Republican intention of limiting access to the right to vote because they think it's the best way to win. And according to the leaked audio, they've been meeting with secretaries of state, with governors, with legislators, all with the intent of putting forward legislation that will restrict access to the right to vote and make it easier for Republicans to win. And we should all be concerned because our elections are not about partisanship. It should not be a question of Republicans or Democrats gaming the system, but everyone being able to participate and make their own choices. What's so kind of Orwellian about all this is at the same time this is happening, Kevin McCarthy is saying that no one is contesting the legitimacy of the last election, which is exactly what they're doing. Well, they're not only is not only is there this hypocrisy, but it's gaslighting. They are saying aloud that there's nothing wrong, and at the exact same time, they're pushing forward legislation to fix something they say is broken. Either they're lying then, or they were lying then, or they're lying now. And the reality is, the lie that continues to weave its way through our democracy is one that turns this issue of partisanship, this naked partisan grab, it distracts us from the fact that this is about citizenship. Who has the right to vote in our nation? And should that vote be impeded because someone doesn't like the choice you're going to make? I, I want the to answer should be unequivocally yeah. no. I want to play an exchange that you recently had on the Hill uh, about voting rights with Louisiana's uh, Republican Senator John Kennedy about restrictions put into place uh, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Georgia. Tell me specifically, just give me a list of the provisions that you object to. I object to the provisions that remove access to the right to vote, that shorten the federal runoff period from nine weeks to four weeks, okay. that restrict the time that a voter can request and return an absentee ballot application, that eliminate... Slow, slow down for me, because our, our audio is not real good here. You went on uh, and in great detail, and I think he was surprised at the detail you were able to go into. Since then, the federal voting rights bill you've been advocating for has stalled. Are you confident at all that something will get passed at this point? Because this week, Democratic Senator Joe Manchin confirmed he wouldn't support the uh, voting rights bill known as the, the For the People Act. Manchin indicated he, he would support another more uh, moderate voting rights bill called John Lewis Voting Rights Act. I think it's important that the voting rights standards that are embedded in the For the People Act, that they pass. And that is standardizing and laying a threshold for how people vote no matter where they live. And whether that occurs through the For the People Act, which I, I know is stalled currently, but this is a long year, and as we discovered in 2020, years can take a lot longer than we imagine. 
But we also know that the persistence of this attack on voting rights in Florida, in Georgia, in Texas, in Arizona, in Iowa, now introduced in Michigan, in Ohio, that these attacks are going to continue, that Heritage Action says it intends to do this in Nevada and in Pennsylvania, that every time we see our right to vote under attack, it should reaffirm for every good American, especially ones who hold federal office in the U.S. Senate, that we have to protect the right to vote, not to defend a party, but to defend the ideals of our nation, and that the most patriotic thing we can do is pass voting rights legislation that actually defends the right to vote for all.